What defines a good jersey? Is it the colors? The logo? Its ability to tell stories? Or is it that connection that ties the past to the future? Though Arizona doesn't have the longest of sports histories, there's still a lot to unpack when it comes to the team's uniforms and logos. Each stretches far beyond what you see at the arena or sitting at home. This is the story behind those uniforms. Where better to start than in an office complex in Phoenix, Arizona? Greg Fisher, owner and founder of Fisher Design, has been creating brands for over 40 years, and most notably has been involved with a number of teams here in the Valley. He's credited with the creation of the Kachina logo, the original design for the Arizona Coyotes, then known as Phoenix Coyotes. Though for Fisher, he wasn't even sure if the design would make it past the earlier stages. For the Coyotes specifically, we were in a meeting with a bunch of NBA guys in Jerry Colangelo's office, and they saw a Kachina, and they said, hey, let's do something that's, you know, so... I don't know if the Kachina is going to actually make it, but I hope it does. For a while, they've, uh, you know, we started out by getting permission from the tribe, so I think we should be okay. We'll see. Um, that's become the most popular secondary jersey in all of the NHL. Everybody wears that sweater, so it's crazy. And while some teams have since replaced their logos, the Kachina has stood the test of time and become one of the most popular throwback looks in the NHL. As a design firm, we're trying to create several different viewing layers. So if you just see it and you glance at it, hopefully you remember it. But if you continue to look at it, you go, oh, that's the shape of the puck. Oh, the coyote's in the shape of an A. I never realized that. Oh, the crescent moon is the C for coyotes. Just stuff that hopefully it, it continues to tell the brand story over time, depending how deep you want to go into it. That depth has evolved into one of the most recognizable and loved sports logo and uniform sets in all of Arizona. For Fisher and his team, the goal has always been to embody the community and connect with those who live in Arizona. You're always trying to build that thread with a community that has some cues, a cue set that people are familiar with, that people can relate to. And so no matter what we're trying to design, we're trying to find some of that common ground. And it doesn't just stop there for Fisher. He was also part of the team that ushered in a new generation and look for the Phoenix Suns. We started working with them in the early 80s. Um, and we redid uh, the Suns and created a bird logo as a secondary mark. And then we started incorporating that bird. I think that this sort of ties back to the Suns when we go back to the uniforms, but we were the first team in the league to go to the NBA and ask permission to put PHX on our uniform instead of the full city. Now everyone does it, but we were the first ones to do it. In addition to the logo redesign, Fisher and his team handled the new uniform set when it debuted in 2013. Those uniforms were designed to remember the past while embracing the future. From our perspective, all the teams for a long time were trying to expand the merchandise line by adding uniforms. And I think what you're seeing now is everybody is choosing their favorites and it's condensing back down to the core things that everyone likes. Another one of Fisher's projects was the creation of the Arizona Diamondbacks logos and uniforms before they debuted in 1998. Fisher and his team decided to think outside the box when picking the team's new colors. We had pinstripe uniforms, we had a purple top, we had... Um, when you work with Major League Baseball, they give you three different grays to choose from, and then you use those material swatches with your color palette to make sure that that color of gray, whether it's warm gray or cool gray, is going to work with your palette. So everybody in the league only gets three choices of gray uni, um, and then you build on top of that color. Though it wasn't all smooth sailing for the new uniforms. And as we were moving through merchandise, we were doing poorly in merchandise sales. Um, and we had a lot of uniforms at the time, which usually generates lots of sales. Um, when the Diamondbacks got purchased by another group, um, we went back to the league offices and they gave this whole presentation about uh, what colors sell the best. It turns out secondary colors do extremely poorly um, compared to red and blue in the United States. Those award-winning designs don't always come easy. Fisher and his team go through a number of steps in the process before settling on an idea. Everybody does tissue directions or everybody does a quick 
computer just black and white of the direction. We hang them up there in the board and then we all go in and just have our own small discussion about what's going to work and why we like what, what needs more motion, what needs more layers, whatever the, whatever the thing is. Looking back, Fisher feels grateful that his work had the opportunity to transform the Arizona sports landscape. I've got to be a part of uh, so many great decisions and so many road trips and got to go see so many stadiums and different things. But, you know, it's always cool if I'm in London and some guys were in a Diamondbacks house. That legacy will forever be a part of Arizona and its teams. When it comes to a team's legacy, few have a history as long and storied as the Arizona Cardinals. Originally founded in 1898, the team has held on to those deep traditions. This team, this franchise, which is owned by the Bidwell family, uh, tradition is extremely important to them. And when I first started uh, covering the team and even working for the team, uh, Bill Bidwell was still alive and running the show. And uh, that part was very important to him. And while most teams often change colors and mascots during a relocation, the Cardinals held true to their traditional uniforms, only making slight alterations at the turn of the century. I think it was important for the franchise uh, and Michael Bidwell, who by then had become an integral part of the team uh, front office, um, that they have a new look. So they decided in 2005 to do some different things. They, they obviously changed the jerseys and the, and the uniforms fairly significantly. But for Urban, the biggest change wasn't even the uniform itself. To me, the most important thing is because you look at it so often, they changed the bird head look. Uh, to be a little bit more angry, I guess is a better term. Um, you know, a lot of people, when they look at the, at the bird head, they don't, uh, they don't necessarily think it's that much different. But if you put the two side by side, it's a fairly significant change. That significant change ushered in a cardinal look that we all know today. And as a reporter for the East Valley Tribune, Urban had a seat front and center for the jersey unveiling. There was a feel that day when you had the new uniforms that they were moving in a different direction. And it was important um, to, to kind of do something like that. They managed to get uh, so many of their young stars to do it. I mean, not only was Kurt Warner there and, and that Kurt Warner had just signed. Kurt Warner had not played a down for the Cardinals yet. It was really his first big event. Fast forward 15 years, and the Cardinals have held firm to that very same look, though the team has been criticized for not trying to change it in recent years. But there isn't necessarily a very uh, super uniqueness to anything they're necessarily wearing. And it does seem like uh, jerseys in general, uh, people like to have that feel of representing whatever city you're in. And I get that. When better to make a change than with a young and talented team? The Cardinals head into 2021 with high expectations, but still no new jerseys. That's one the fans have thrown out. Hey, it's the Kyler Murray era. Uh, he's a young kid. He has said on Twitch that he wouldn't mind having new uniforms when he's been playing a, a video games. He's mentioned that to the public. So, hey, why wouldn't you just do this all together? And The Urban and the Cardinals have a great counter argument to all the fans demanding for a new look. New uniforms themselves are not going to win you football games. And, uh, you know, there's been plenty of teams that have updated their uniforms and still struggled on the field. And um, I think the uniform situation can bolster a fan base sometimes. Um, but ultimately, I think fans also want you to win. And like all things in life, jerseys and logos age and evolve. For the Phoenix Suns and Arizona Diamondbacks, that's been one place where they've needed to step outside their comfort zone. The Dimebacks approach has been to target the new and younger audience to see what works and what doesn't. We were really trying to be progressive and, you know, really, you know, touch a different fan base and the younger group. Um, and then, you know, just, we always kind of felt like we would cycle through these uniforms a little bit more frequently than other teams. So what we looked at when we were taking away some of those elements was just simplifying and kind of getting back to the more traditional baseball look, especially it's difficult because baseball is such a traditional sport. Um, so you can't really do as much as what the NBA has done or the NFL has done. So. Though it's worth remembering the Dimebacks are actually one of the youngest teams in all of baseball. We don't have that history. We can, we're building that now and we're building a fan base. 
Um, so gives us a lot of creative freedom to kind of go outside the box and do different things and test things. One of those experiments being the 2016 jersey unveiling, which featured a modern dynamic new look for the team. Just that set of uniforms, you, you know, it just kind of blew up in the Twitter world. And, you know, we were prepared to take any sort of criticism that was going to come our way um, because we know we were going out there and trying something different. There are some growing pains throughout all of it, but um, it definitely was uh, um, a very cool experience to be a part of that. Though the jerseys didn't last long as the team opted to dial back the changes in a 2020 rebrand. It's tough because you want the sport to continue to grow and you want to reach a young fan base. And, and if we continue just to do traditional stuff and not change, then I don't know if that reaches everyone. At what point is it too much? Like your brand begins to morph with these uniforms. What's your brand now if you continue to grow too much and, and change a lot of things? Another emphasis with the newer set was to prioritize the logo fundamentals. The one thing that we wanted to do is make sure that the A logo was the front facing logo. It represents Arizona and wanted to really push that hard. The A logo is strong. It's been, it will always be a part of the Diamondbacks. It's been here since the beginning. It might look a little bit different with the colors, but um, that, that strength and that mark is what we wanted to make sure that we put that on the cap as the primary mark. Similar to the Coyotes, Dimebacks fans have been vocal about the team possibly utilizing their original look in today's game. When I tell people I work for the D-backs, I think that's one of the number one questions I get all the time is like, how come you don't have purple anymore? Are you bringing it back? It's nostalgic and we did win a championship in it. But if you look at it, we also have been in the playoffs with every set of our uniforms. Um, whether it was that first, you know, that first set with purple and turquoise and the original version of red and sand and then this current. That current set may seem simple, but it has the potential to be more. We're always looking to evolve um, in a sense, whether it's our brand or, or whatnot. So um, there's, I think there's always going to be something, something brewing. And just up the road, the Phoenix Suns have been brewing up some new plans of their own. The team has been working hand in hand with Nike to make sure newer designs reflect the upward trajectory of the team. It's all kind of hit all at once, right? We've got uh, a, a young team, we've got um, you know a new arena and a lot of the innovation that's going into the arena. Um, and you've got now a new jersey, a new uniform that is just you know something unlike anything we've actually done before. That new uniform was designed with the purpose of connecting to those living in the valley. To be reflective of what the city represents, right? So getting out into, you know, some unique places here, into the desert, into the old western towns, into old town Scottsdale. So how do we, you know, kind of represent all of those into, um, you know, in, into the whole, the whole process. The jersey may look different, but it still stays true to the history the Suns have in Arizona. No, this is ours. We want to we want to own it. And we want to put it out there the way that we, we think it should be represented in the market. But one place where the team lacked some pop was when Nike unveiled its icon and association set in 2017. Neither really hit home with fans. When Nike first started doing our uniforms, um, we were we were much more uh, we weren't as, as involved vocally about how what we were wanting, what we were wanting from the organization. It was more Nike was like, we have these jerseys and these uniforms. We're like, OK, we'll take them. And moving forward, we've, you know, uh, as part of the process, it was much more, we were much more involved on it on this end. That was the case with the team's statement set, which debuted in 2019. It embraced the team's logo in an exciting new way. Having just the, the sunburst on the front is, you know, and it kind of is an homage back to the Barkley era where we had, you know, the big burst across the chest, um, you know, from from the 90s, uh, which was obviously an iconic jersey, gets us close to that, but without, you know, with a new interpretation. The NBA as a whole has embraced creativity for jerseys, but Grasha feels too much experimentation could be a bad thing. Not every uniform should be the Valley uniform. So kind of have the simple so that you can have the more extreme and, you know, the more, to have that sort of contrast in your palette. And fans won't have to wait long to see some new home and away sets. So the association and icon uh, lasts for uh, for five seasons. So there there will be uh, in the seasons to come uh, new versions of those um, coming up. Um, not necessarily right away, but in the in the coming seasons. 
Similar to their success with the Valley uniforms, the Phoenix Suns will continue to embody that Arizona spirit. You know, our guys are, they're close up to the camera. They've got tattoos. You can see them. You can see their shoes. There's their walk-ins. There's a lot more personality going into our players. And, and we've also tried to adopt that into our creative as well. And whether it's on the ice in Glendale, on the court and field in downtown Phoenix, or inside the stadium at State Farm, You'll see Arizona proudly worn and displayed. Its future looks bright in the Valley of the Sun.